Hi everybody, today we're going to be installing a Victron BMV 712 battery monitor. It's a Bluetooth version. So I'm just going to show you um, how I'm running this wire. It's a comm cable. It goes in the back of that and it goes down to a shunt down by the battery box. A shunt just uh, allows the monitor to tap in and um, know what the flow of electricity is from the battery to the rest of the coach. So I can keep track of um, the voltage of the batteries as well as how much energy is coming out or going into the battery. Um, this is a part of my solar install and this is specific to the Safari Trek 2830. This is a 2001 model. Although I think the wiring and uh, routing is going to be similar for most of the Safaris. So uh, I'm going to just show you where I'm routing the wires and hopefully um, this will be helpful to you if you care to put your monitor in the same place as I do. My first thought was to put it in the wheel well near the batteries. Uh, that way I wouldn't have to run the cable very far um, and just put it in there. But I figure I'm so rough on stuff that I'd kick this this thing out of the place sooner or later. So um, I'm going to put it up top where the rest of the monitor stuff is, like the tank monitors and the, the switches for the outdoor and in, interior lights and the water pump, that place. I'll show you in just a second. I think I'm going to mount the monitor about right here. Uh, I want it kind of evenly spaced out here. And I'm going to use that square faceplate to kind of match the rest of the switches here. Now, originally I thought I was going to have to remove this entire piece so that I could get to the back of this because I need to put a two inch hole in it to mount that monitor. Uh, there's a hole right there. I mean, I this thing comes out and then there's a screw back behind there. And then there are screws on this side that hold that box part in. Now I took that one out and I took the other ones out and it wouldn't budge. Then I got smart and realized that I could take this out. And so all this comes out and I can get my hand back in here to mount that, um, that monitor. And there are additional screws back here. There's three that I can find and probably this fourth one that keep this thing in place and hopefully there's not more so if you ever wanted to take this this whole piece off, that's what you need to do is remove the the um, tank monitors and and um, the Hobbs meter and all that stuff out, and get to these screws to take this part off. So just just for your information, in case you ever thought, oh, you know, I want to take this thing off. I don't really need it, or I wanted to upgrade it, or whatever. So from here, I'm coming through that hole and along the bottom of the, this cabinet. All the way over here and through that hole. And this is this is where I'm at. This is the, the cabinets above the dining room table. And so now I'm coming over here to this cabinet. And you can see there's holes there. I'm going to come down through there, around, through this hole, through that hole, because there's room there. Down. And down behind all these um, drawers and through the floor into the storage bay that's down below there. And then I'll take it around and out near the battery. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to show you everything here. Just uh, I'll show you once I've routed the wire. Okay, so I've measured over the same distance from here to here, from here to here. 
And then I put the plate up and marked the corners. And then I drew a line from opposite corners to each other to get the center of where I'm going to drill my two inch hole. So that's, uh, that's how I did that. And next I'll be drilling the hole. Well, that's a little snug, so I'm going to have to use a sander and make this hole a little bit bigger for me. According to the instructions, there are two ways to mount the gauge. One is with this um, mounting plate. It just snaps in the back. It's a little fiddly to get it to snap. There's a little key that shows you, you know, how it lines up. Uh, and then this goes over the top just as a, uh, you know, decorative trim piece. Or you can just use the circular part and use this ring that screws on the back like that. Now, um, I am going to be using both. Uh, the ring for added security and um, the mounting plate because I want this trim piece on there because I think it'll look better up there. But that's just me. The easier way would be not to use this trim piece and just mount it by screwing this on the back. But that's just me. All right. So I'm going with the threads closest to the, the gauge that's for the thicker material. You can go the other way. Threads further away from the gauge. That is for thinner material. So this looks like a three quarter inch ply, which is kind of overkill for this box, but that's safari for you. They were pretty well built. So I'm putting that through onto the cable first because I'm going to thread that on. After I get this cable plugged into the back here. Oh, and this plate came off. Oh, look at that. I got it snapped on just fine. And there we go. Looks like it belongs.
So now it's just a matter of routing the rest of the wire down through to the battery bay. That comm cable's stuck in the back there, and it comes out there. That's that gray cable along this back part. This is the this is the um, bottom of the shelf here. So I'll lay that back down. There's the cable again, routed back through there. Out there, through that one, out there, and <clears throat> down below the drawers. And then I'll be going through that floor down to the um, storage compartment there and then back out of it to the battery area. So I'll probably keep the extra cable coiled up in here because it won't interfere with anything. The bottom of the drawer won't get in the way and I'm going to zip tie um, that cable against all the rest of them to keep it out of the way of the drawers. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, gives you an idea how to route this cable on um, the BMV 712 from above the door where all the other monitor panels are or monitors are to the battery. When I get outside I'll show you how I'm going to route it from the storage bay which is just below that over to the battery. And then this is where it comes out in this uh, back bay where the water is on this passenger side. And then I'll zip that all up, get that tied up with the bundle of rest of the bundle up there and get that whole um, silicone. Okay, this is the shunt box. The shunt should be shielded. Um, I didn't know a good way of mounting this thing inside, so what I did was bought a project box off of Amazon and mounted the shunt in it. So I've got wire going to ground. I've got the uh, ground wire coming from the solar charger to this end of the shunt. And this end is the negative coming from the battery. So all this is negative. The um, red and the red and black wire are the temperature sensor for the BVW 720 or 712 that allows me to know the temperature of the battery. And then the white cable coming in is the, um, the comm cable for the battery monitor. This has got some electronic circuitry. It's not um, outdoor rated, so that's why it's in this box. The box is watertight. I'm going to seal these holes with silicon and get this all buttoned up. And this is the wires. This is the uh, temperature sensor here. It's fused. You can see the fuse there. And I'll get this all zipped up very soon. This is where my positive and negative leads coming out of the bay. They're uh, weather sealed um, right there. But I'm going to just go ahead and put some silicone around that too just to make sure it doesn't leak. Wouldn't want that to happen. And then running this white comm cable back down there. I'll get this all zip tied up and uh, wire protected uh, with some wire protector too to, to keep it from chafing. And not that I'm too worried about that. So I had extra cable after I ran the, this comm cable all the way back. So I'm just Instead of running it back up and tucking it underneath the, the drawer like I did the rest of it, I just um, doubled it over and zip tied it to the rest of the cabling up here. Okay, and here's the monitor working, um, showing 100% on the battery. When you touch one of these buttons, you get a backlight. You can adjust the um, intensity of the backlight and also the duration it stays on. Uh, it'll go off. I was worried about this light being on all night, but it, it cuts itself off. So. That's how many hours I have left, which it says inf infinite because the um, solar panels are charging the batteries and it thinks it's got unlimited power. That'll change 
when um, the solar panels aren't working. That's the battery temperature, 50 degrees outside right now. The volts of the battery, number of amps flowing in, number of watts the solar panels are charging the battery. Right now it's in float mode, so it's ramped down to just um, 25, 24 volt or watts right now. Um, when it's charging in the morning, it, it'll go significantly higher. And this is amp hours being used out of the battery, and it's at zero and back to 100%. And so you can set this up and select things. I'm not going to go through the whole um, menu. I just wanted to show you the types of things this will tell you. Additionally, uh, it's on Bluetooth. I just generally use the Bluetooth app and to show me what's going on with the battery and the charger and, and stuff. So um, this is part of the system and next week we'll show you how I did the solar panels and the solar controller. Uh, it was actually simpler than this. Thanks for watching.